Right, class, with this lecture, we are going to examine the events leading up to the and then briefly wrap up by looking at reconstruction in the South after the Civil War. So, all right, so at this young point in the United States history, you know, for our rule is in our, uh, from our Britain ways we've established ourselves as our own independent nation and uh, you know once that was uh, the groundwork was laid for that then early Americans started looking west and so we have an era of westward expansion where settlers are uh, moving into the continental USA. And so, you know, the United States is, is starting to get shaped as the United States we know it today. It's not quite there yet, but, uh, you know, this is the beginning of a lot of, of, of how land, fires, um, you know, land was taken away from Spanish and it was taken away from Native Americans. And so we see a lot of conflict early years with expansion in America uh, forming itself. And, and so once we moved westward, we gained uh, pretty much the whole part of the continent as, uh, you know, as far as this middle section here is concerned. We had cotton ties with Europe. So America is definitely in what is called an isolationist stance. They believe that uh, they are the ones that uh, you know, manifest destiny. It is their divine right of God that they should, you know, as Americans control this part of the Western Hemisphere. Of course, you know, that didn't just mean the continental United States. Uh, America was uh, extremely interested in Latin America and the Caribbeans. And so, you know, once again, they were trying to get European powers out of uh, those countries so that uh, we were able then to come in and, and pretty much like take over right and so in all this isolationist uh, ideology all this forming a new nation and uh, westward expansion slavery was a huge issue for the majority of people however when it comes to the civil war at, at the onset, it wasn't slavery per se that that was causing the discord there between the North and the South. It did have to do with, you know, more of expansion in the form of economic resources and economic endeavors. Now, of course, slavery is an inextricably linked to uh, Southern commerce and economics, but the Northern states, you know, this is the beginning of industrialization. So industry is always already going on in Europe. Think like uh, Oliver Twist, Charles Dickens, you know, uh, Scrooge, like that time period, that early, you know, the early 1900s, industrialism is kicking in starting to build cities over there. So, you know, in the northern part of the United States, industrialism uh, played a big role. So, you know, there was a lot of urbanization and, and, and maybe it's not even, it, it is urbanization, you know, because all these big cities were popping up. There were these mass floods of immigrants coming to, you know, the new world because, uh, you know, to, to, you know, that American dream of you come to, to this land and uh, you can start over, you can have a new life, you can have a better life than you did in your old country. And so, of course, all these different cultures coming together, everybody is also bringing, uh, you know, cultural diversity to the country too. So, back to slavery. <clears throat> So once again, you know, freeing the slaves was initially, it wasn't an issue in the war. However, though, you know, like I, by this time, there was a huge abolitionist movement in the North. Um, it was gaining root 
or it had roots, some roots in the southern states. And then, of course, you know, out west, there were people who slavery, like, you, of course, supported it. And, um, you know, right, because it's all tied to the economics of the southern states. You know, the, the agriculture that they were doing was contingent on slave labor because people were just going to willingly do it. Now, at the same time, in the north, there were a lot of indentured servants and uh, they just, you know, so pretty much it, it was a it was a system of slavery that that was not as heinous as what Africans experience during the slave trade. But uh, by being in the Pretty much legally bound to somebody else someone did own you and then you know these big factories that were popping up there were a, you know there weren't any labor laws there weren't any child labor laws so uh there were a lot of hiccups and a lot of uh just what we would consider cruel and unusual unusual treatment to these early workers so there we go. So think about all of that compounded. You know, there there are definitely a lot of difficult questions facing facing the United States and how they were going to set themselves up as a major contender against European powers. How were they going? Were they going to establish? You know, the social uh, structure, social order, and uh, have economic expansion big in that right but you can't force you know we all have will and uh so since until sorry oh, where am i okay so Nation that we see slavery and the war just uh, become linked directly linked together. And then, of course, there were many slaves that were uh, slaves that had actually uh, managed to get to the Union. So, you know, contraband. Or really trying to persuade those other states. And I, I tell you guys, it's the Ohio River. If uh, you know anything about United States geography, if you look at the Ohio River that ends there, uh, Kentucky, Virginia, maybe West Virginia, I can't really think that far east, but at least, you know, Kentucky and uh, part of Virginia there. And so a lot of the slaves, if they got to the Ohio River and, you know, they made it across to Ohio, they were safe. And, uh, you know, of course, then there were, there were uh, a lot of working to help slaves become free, like, uh, you know, the Underground Railroad. And uh, there were different ways that these slaves um, were escaping and, and then getting help on uh, But uh, he is in the failure, and uh, but pretty much it was like his slave came over and you found him, then you had to like pay for their freedom and, and wanted the states to pay for their freedom. And so, you know, those border states just uh, weren't really willing to uh, dish out the money. All right. Owners were just outraged by the emancipation because you have to remember to them their slaves were property you know they, they were like having a dog or having a cattle or something you know it, it, it's like shocking as that is to hear that people can actually think of other people that way you know there was this mentality and and too that that wasn't the whole mentality of 
the South, uh, you know, because the majority of Southerners white, you know, the, the, the share over there, the plantation owners, I think it was like, it, it's at the most 10% of society. So they were outraged, outraged by these people that were, you know, not returning their property and, and stand on one side of the higher river and scream and cuss and people on the other side would probably scream and cuss back at them, you know, ha ha. I wonder there's, you know, some crazy things, but imagine being that person and what you had to go through to, you know, get across that river and have freedom. I mean, that tells you a lot about how people were being treated because, you know, I mean, they were going through. And if you guys have ever been to the Southeast, you know how beautiful, you also know how like dense and wild it can be too, you know, so there's like, I mean, by that, a lot of trees. There are a lot of things like hawthorn, another, and and you know like bramble and raspberry bushes and stuff like that that have a lot of of, um, of thorns on them. So you know you you're trying to escape from somewhere and you have to you know get through nature before you even get to that river. And I'm sure they were exhausted and, and experienced. calls for new troops to come in federal soldier free at the second in that climax at the battle into the time, I'm not really sure. Um, we see the winter of discontent. There we go. As we're seeing these new troops being called in, you know, eventually we see a draft that gets instituted. It doesn't happen at first, but you know, eventually all young men between a certain age are called to go fight for uh, their side of the battle, you know, and, and you know, and if you didn't, there were um, a lot of serious consequences for uh, desertion and, uh, you know, failing to participate and, uh, you know, as they were, you know, because they're in the beginning, you're calling for volunteers and, and you know, you don't really get a lot of that, but once because people don't really take it seriously at first, right? They started getting into these battles and uh, there were a few to where, you know, the, the South actually won, you know, there at the beginning, Lincoln, the, the Union thought that the South was indeed going to be successful. You know, the South had already annexed himself, became the Confederate States. They'd already elected their own president. Battle. It just did not look good for the union. No, there, there's just like I said, people aren't. You know, it's it's still new. It's not as big as a deal. It's not really directly affecting everybody's lives like it, it starts to here in a, a year or so. You know. We see what is called the rise of soldiers. Wanted the they wanted the the fighting. Recognized. Wanted it to be recognized. Unity in the north. that had to do with the food shortage, food shortages. Then by, by like 1862, that is 
uh, class tensions because it was very evident poor people, all the poor boys were getting drafted before the wealthy ones. And that's uh, going to make people mad. So, and thinking about that, they say it was, you know, not a man's fight, even though, you know, there were a lot, of, you know, especially on the southern side, because, you know, the majority of them did raise, and, uh, you know, they, they were pretty much going and fighting the rich people's war. And so, you know, that was really tricky for the new Southern uh, Confederate government because they had to find, you know, that's where the whole, you know, the Southern mentality kind of started because in order to get people to, you know, to get those poor people to go fight, they had to have some kind of prob propaganda that made the war important to them. So, you know, the propaganda was that they're, they're trying to attack you too. You know, it's not just about us and our slaves. It's, it's you, it's this whole Southern way of life, the Southern style, the Southern culture, you know, and, and that's, you just hit people and, and you start getting on. People are motivated to want to the uh, battle of, uh, I'm glad it's up there now. I am Amphium. Sharpsburg battle in uh, Sharpsburg there was one of the single bloodiest battles in American history. And so we see 24 casualties for both sides there. And so uh, not pretty as uh, this is, uh, I hope, uh, you know, this is a, obviously of uh, a battle after it has occurred. And so we're seeing the dead bodies and, uh, you know, there was a lot of cannons. This is actually, uh, cannons were really used during the Civil War, especially down here in the South, when you visit a lot of the uh, historic sites, actually anywhere, anywhere in, like in Alabama, you just go out and get near evidence of you know names and you can find evidence of where there were a uh, civil war because you find the cannonballs and so you know in that first picture when we see all that ball body the loss of limbs and scattered and then in this picture there's of just the horrors of what it does to people and we see those dead bodies. Um, all right, and so the results of that battle were that, um, you know, so Confederates didn't really have so much of this isolation stance. I mean, a lot of their economy was based on, so here's another because they were more our agricultural type economy, a lot of their products were being shipped to Europe. So, of course, the Confederate States, they, they wanted to maintain good ties with the British and the French. And that is actually one of the ways that the unions were able to, you know, kind of successfully end the, the, the battle went down to the down there in the Gulf of Mexico, off the coast of the Atlantic, and uh, they blocked the ships. So, so the states weren't allowed to ship products out, and they couldn't get the British and send them, you know, send them supplies because the Union had a Right, and so we just see a picture of Lincoln and uh, Lincoln at times 
it, I'm sure your players seemed over what was going on, kind of like him in Congress. So, you know, the new guys in charge there in the union. Connected and divided blueprint for modern America that is. I didn't say Here we the Confederate. And so in the summer of 1863, um, let's see, we already, already talked about the draft, the opposed 20 Negro law was, uh, I don't Some little fun historical facts there about what was going on as a result of you know the rising and the idea of a draft, you know, forcing to have to or something, you know, and war. End of the Civil War, you know, four million were liberated. This is why we have uh, June 6th right now. It wasn't I, I can't remember when, but I mean, it was many, many years that eventually uh, the African Americans figured, you know, heard the news that they were indeed free because, you know, guys, they didn't have children. Snapchat, they couldn't just pull it up and everybody's free now. You know, they they had to wait until that news got to them and they didn't really have the transportation or networking systems to be able, you know, really, really rural area. So it wasn't until some rural little town there in Texas that word got to them that, you know, it we marked that as, you know, the day that all slaves had indeed, you know, recognized their Freedom because it's like everybody knew now, you know. In the seeds in the summer of 1860, we see out of the And uh, Lee was very bold and aggressive. General Lee was very bold and aggressive. Had a he kind of lost his nerve, right? You know, they they lost. Another Confederate invasion. I'm asking to July first to July third of eighteen. General Lee. Oh, so for me. And of course, the Battle of Gettysburg was indeed the most battle and the greatest battle of America and, and, and of the uh, Civil War. You know, it served, you know, the amount of life lost in Gettysburg surpassed all the others. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons for the amount of loss of life was due to the lack medical knowledge and medical technology so a lot of of the soldiers end up dying from um infection because pretty much they would they set up in these fill they set up these big tents with these cots and they just bring in all, all all the soldiers that that were not dead right you know and like i said a lot of cannibal fodder so you know a lot of limbs a lot of people ended up with missing limbs at, at of the Civil War, and, uh, you know, the idea was that in order to save the person, you just kind of had to like cut it off. And so the doctor, they they get sanitized, and you know, they were just so overwhelmed bodies that they would literally just walk around, and you know, like a hand saw, and uh, you know, like a hand bone saw, and they would just whack the limb off, wouldn't wipe it off, wouldn't wipe off the blood, move on. 
whack that off and, and you know, they just saw, saw him limbs off left and right. It's not, and uh, I think that's one thing we can learn from history is that war is not pretty. We've had a lot of bloody ones and surely evolved point that we can start looking at other things. I always have to say hopeful and positive that we will find um, other women. Uh, it's pain. Let's see, do I have that one? We'll stay here a little bit. the zips campaign, and uh, you know, that's so excited. At least on the Gettys. And so, um, and uh, these calls for emancipation proclamation. Now it did reinforce calls for enlistment of black men to the union. Black men in the union garrison supplies essentially were able to become. And combat uh, continued military principles that, that emancipation was confirmed. Fourteen Amendment by the end of four, and so we see the of uh, Cucamonga, Chattanooga. This is where you know initially the Confederate is victorious. Cucamonga Creek, really pretty place if you've ever seen it. Lincoln. I'm of Virginia. And then later, the Union under William Rose ends up capturing Chattanooga there for a little while. Another key battle in another key place because of the Tennessee River and because of the is in a river of valley. So, you know, that's why the Confederates who lived there, they knew those strategic, they knew the strategic points along Chattanooga, actually, the Chattanooga River area. And that's what, you know, but the river and the valley system there, you know, they knew the points along the river there and the points along the mountains that served as the lookout. And, you know, that knowledge came from uh, a lot of the Creek Indian Wars, so, you know, even back when uh, they were, you know, before uh, or those early colonial settlers, they would encounter a lot of the Creek and Cherokee Indian, um, Indian, and uh, so there were a lot of uh, Indian. Once again, you know, there, there were a lot. Um, when it came to winter of uh, 63 to 4, many were succumbing to the, just the loss of morale. It was a very trying year. And moved southward from Washington and then what Two days of hellish fighting. Uh, the the Confederates they inflicted some severe casualties on Grant is outside of the wilderness. The wilderness area is pretty much like it was pushed. Groups group that actually outflanked Lee by mid May. Assaults against Confederates. Spotsylvania, and then on June 3rd, we see Cold Harbor, Battle of Ridge. As I reminded, Gettysburg, and then Grant eventually settled on Stalemate. Um, nine months. 
in May, so in May of 1864, just uh, not halfway through the year, and they already had thousand casualty. All right, and so, uh, like I said, originally the Confederates uh, had an upper hand. Then, you know, we see these, these bloody, uh, bloody battles, and uh, we see wins, gains, and losses on both sides. Oh, some of this we just talked about. Sorry about that. But uh, let's see what else here. So, this idea of attrition, dragging. Now, what I just said about catcher catching the arbor those harbor ports there that I said that they couldn't get any supplies, it, you know, really what eventually the South because you know they didn't have supplies, um, they they weren't able to get union, they weren't able to get weapons, let alone food to uh, feed the forces. Whereas you know the North wouldn't have any problem with us. And so, you know, at first the idea was to drag the war, but you know, once these battles started coming on, and once, like I said, it was just horrible, you got way too big. Uh, would divide, literally did divide some families, you know, down the middle, and you would. On the other side, that was your family member, you know. This out there, like will run there. So you know that that in itself was very tragic too. I mean, when it comes to the Native American populations, three fourths of them were wiped out from uh, you know the time of contact the time of the Indian Wars here, right into the Civil War era. Bloody start, right? It's hard to do that, even though we're a long way from 1863 or 1763, we're in 2002, I still think we still, you know, we still have a lot of learning and to do, right? So by the time we get to the West, we see Thurman is stretched heavily in his march through the South of Atlanta. And so Thurman burned down Atlanta and Atlanta, Georgia was a major, just like Hotlanta is today, guys, Atlanta has always been a major commerce station, we can say, you know, it's always been a hub of culture and technology and, and uh, you know, trade and resources. And so Atlanta there had a strong hold and, uh, you know, helping to maintain uh, the Southern economy. And because it was one of the, if, if not, yeah, I think I would safely say that at this time in history, Atlanta, and they don't call it hot land or nothing if you've ever been to Atlanta. But you know, Atlanta was was the 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 place to be in the South. It was, you know, the main hub there of everything. So Thurman's army saying they just rode through and burned everything. They kind of employed the conquistador tactic, if you guys remember that early lecture. The Spanish conquistadors would come in, especially in like Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, and uh, they would just burn villages and people alive. You know, that's pretty much what Sherman did. And uh, so, so he starts marching his way through the South, and uh, he gets to Atlanta, 
and they burn Atlanta to the ground. And so, you know, really demoralizing out of the Confederate state. And, you know, that was really scary. It was pretty obvious. I mean, if you come through burning stuff and uh, was, you know, very successful, Confederate starting to have doubts about their ability to win the war. Now, here is a fact. Atlanta was burned to the ground and rebuilt. Now, one of the, one of the, I don't know if it's the oldest, but one of the absolutely, it's at least in the top five, even top three oldest cities in Georgia is Savannah, Georgia. And uh, the reason that Sherman's army did not burn down Savannah is because they did the tactics that the Persians did when the uh, European Crusaders started coming to them over in Europe back in ancient, you know, ancient history. We're talking like 12th, 10th, 11th century. What a lot of these uh, like Persian empires, the king, they would, you know, they're like, oh, these people are coming through and plundering and burning everybody down. So um, they got, I believe it was in Turkey somewhere. Um, but it wasn't called time. But they got to the place, and the king. They had this big party, and and uh, you know, brought them to the castle, and and uh, they were just disgusted by these European crusaders because they were dirty, they were nasty, like you know, they hadn't bathed, they did, they did not bathe, um, and uh, their hands, you know, why the king and and all the people, and uh, their city, they they were all trying to kick back with utensils so pretty much they wind and dine them and then they send them on their way with like a bunch of a bunch of uh, gifts jewels you know just whatever they could to get them out of there and, and send them on a ship and set them off and told them if they ever come back they kill them that time it just so uh that that's uh that's kind of what uh savannah did with sherman they heard of course everybody in the south heard about atlanta being burned and uh, so savannah said well hey what if we throw sherman a party when they get here and they did they had big banners and, and streamers and a band and when they saw sherman marching in everybody was in and, and so yeah you know absolutely smart move Martin and i actually have never been to savannah georgia I've seen a lot of documentaries because they do they do a lot of good actually very well known and most haunted in America. Like Gettysburg. Oh, I forgot. I didn't mention it. it has to be because a block of Gettysburg is one of the most uh, locations in America. Yeah. So what we see in this picture is, uh, I can't remember if they're in Atlanta or not, when they're this. Definitely looks like there might be some kind of fire in the background. I don't know if you guys, that smoke or what that, that hazy thing is in the middle of both those guys' heads. But uh, it could just be where the burning roller tracks here. But uh, So this was another strategy employed by the Union Army, you know, once again, they had them, they, they cut, we, the Union cut the South off in those harbors, so they weren't able to get any shipments or resources in via boat. And uh, when Sherman and his men came through the railroad track too, those being tore up, there was no way just among the Southern states for them to get supplies to where they needed to be. So, you know, we can see how created a lot of havoc in the southeast and uh so you know that that added to one of the problems of reconstruction which we'll talk about there went to savannah so i just uh over these sorry guys i'm a little behind on on my slides here with my notes all right hmm
Okay, so so by the time we get to uh, you know, turning every um, um so this, and now the South, the Confederacy is starting lost a lot of men, you know, by this time you're like anybody. Able to live, you know, any any little boy that can carry, you know, at this point it's like anybody that can pick up a gun and come fight needs to go fight. And you know, it's like seven, eight year old boys. And now most they they saw a lot of them. they were what were considered morale. They would like the soldiers around and have little drums and flute and provide morale. Um, and I, you know, got down there. And probably see they're being depleted of sources, being depleted of or and so they considering using black soldiers and the army, but you know, that how well was that gonna work against slave? There's a whole war focused on helping them you know, when they're slavery, how how's that going to work out? Like, if we get them guns, they're just probably going to turn around and use them against us. That is not to say that there were no black soldiers that did indeed fight on the side of the Confederacy because it was more about it was kind of, you know, camaraderie. Like I said, most of the whites were poor settlers. And so, you know, some of the blacks that they lived with, they'd go to, to help out their, their fellow white brothers. And, 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 and you know, and, uh, everybody goes to war for their own reasons, right? But the main reasons is because you want to protect somebody you love. A lot of times, that, that's a main reason. And so that's some some cases of there being blacks and like I said, Native Americans actually fighting. That's just speculation, but I feel like that's a, a good psychological assessment because that's kind of human nature type. Love somebody when you consider someone family, a brother, color, skin, religion, sex, sexuality, none of these things come in. In the Valley, Richmond, and to Virginia. This is then where we see. I'm not even going to try. A comma Fox. Of course, soon turn morning this happened with President Lincoln on April 14th. And so, war and question. Fundamental question. Question and discrimination. And was the superiority for the black? Uh, yeah, remember we we um, start. We are a dual system government. You know there is a separation between the federal government and state governments, and so you know the Civil War really um, made that apparent that the federal government had more power than the states. The state could not rise up and overthrow the federal. Government, right? And uh, so the resolution there in lives lost, including Lincoln there. And of course, John Wilkes Booth shot Lincoln at the, I can't remember the name of the theater, but he was uh, going to watch a show. And in the middle of the theater performance, John, walks, uh, John Wilkes Booth walked up into the President's booth and shot him in the back. Shot him in the back. And uh, it's really weird because 
there are stories that like Lincoln had like intuitive dreams. And I think even like Mary Todd, his wife, had these like intuitive dreams or or they were kind of well, at this time there was this big move in America called um, mysticism and it was all about spirit contact this is when Ouija boards first came about you know Ouija boards it wasn't until the 70s and, and um, uh, 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 the exorcist movie came out that Ouija boards got turned into the demonic things they are and they first invented they parlor tricks games this is what people would come to each other's house and you know they would communicate with their dead dead loved ones. And so it was this whole movement. And uh Mary Todd Lincoln was really big into mysticism and she, you know, the whole seance, they did seances, Ouija board stuff, play with tarot cards. And uh, I can't remember if she had a prophetic dream about Lincoln dying too, or if maybe some spirits came and told her about it. But as you know, like he knew they they knew that something bad was going to happen. You know, they had this in, intuition, and and you know, documented that that they it was later that night. And I I don't know how close to that. It's kind of like with uh, Julius Caesar when he was assassinated. I can't remember his wife, but she had a dream that he was going to be murdered. But he didn't pay any attention, and you know, to Brutus. And to Julius Caesar, he was actually portrayed, portrayed and, and assassinated. This one was a Brutus who was his like man, so that's where that E2 Brutus comes from. It's a slang saying for when somebody you thought was you, right? So, um, and of course, Lincoln's death was uh, just very tragic and it was definitely, you know, very tragic for the African American community because, you know, they they they, uh, they believe they owed a lot of debt and appreciation for to Lincoln for being the man to finally stand up to uh, do the right slavery and then of course you know that that and for um him assassinated and so last here before we wrap up this part of the we'll start uh, we'll continue with um looking we'll continue by excuse me looking at reconstruction so just a table here that gives us the casualties and the civil war and the navies because like i said you know of those those key port uh, harbors where uh, resources and supplies could come in you know this was actually there were actually a lot of uh, battles that were fought at sea in the navy so um and we'll talk about that sorry about that and there there were just a lot of over the north and the south right and so like i said just a battle of those casualties and so um it's very interesting too that we have a category of miscellaneous deaths that they just uh, don't really know what happened there were actually even uh that would even include like people that deserted it's just you know they the one day you wake up johnny's gone and they did he die or did he just go out west assume a new identity all right, guys, and so that wraps up the first part of our lecture. Make sure to watch lecture, the second part of this lecture when we talk about the aftermath of the Civil War and the challenges of Reconstruction in the South. Thanks, guys. Bye.